All right. Yeah, go for it. I'm Jennifer Taub, and I'm calling the meeting of the local (coughs) district commission to order a little after four on November 16th. And this, um, our agenda today, I, I think we'll probably be able to wrap up, you know, in about an hour. We don't have any applications. Uh, pending today, which isn't unusual as we get into the winter and kind of past construction yeah. season. Um, do you have any announcements, Ben, or anybody? Mm. No, no, I don't think I do. Okay. Does anybody I, I, else? I was thought, no, but I, I thought the house on Fearing Street was under uh, discussion today. My, did we handle that? Oh, no, I was just giving that as an example. Um, I see. Okay. Right. That 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 was uh, one of the properties as we get into the minimum maintenance discussion that really spurred me oh, yeah. to think we might need this. Uh-huh. And um, uh-huh. I don't. I think it's an issue that's not as relevant in the um, Dickinson Historic District. Fortunately for you. <laughs> um, well, there is one house on the corner of Mattoon and Triangle that. We, Here's the oh, agenda going. for today. Oh, the agenda. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, what I was hoping we could do today, since we didn't have any applications pending, is is, you know, begin the discussion of whether or not we would like to it have as part of the local historic district bylaw a section to address um, minimum maintenance, which is sometimes called demolition by neglect. Um, I personally think minimum maintenance more describes what what we're talking about. Um, Demolition by neglect is often for cities or towns that have a lot of abandoned properties and Mm -hmm. that they find that they have to literally demolish them because they're so neglected that they're structurally not sound. And in Amherst, particularly in Mm -hmm. the North Prospect Lincoln Sunset LHD neighborhood, where we have more uh, student rentals, we have a situation where property owners who frankly have the means to maintain their property just choose not to. And um, we had started to, back when uh, Brandon was the town uh, staff uh, Mm -hmm. supporting this committee commission, he had gone and might've been back in 2018, he had gone to a conference that the Massachusetts Historical Commission um, sponsored for representatives from cities and towns throughout the state on demolition by neglect and minimum maintenance bylaws. And we were about to start discussing that when we, back a year and a half ago, when we received the Amherst Media application. And then that really took up most of 2019. Mm -hmm. So this was kind of the first opportunity where we had um, a commission meeting that wasn't you know, where we didn't have a lot of applications pending that we could begin to address this issue. And again, it's just for right now, we're just beginning the conversation and, you know, we'll see if we feel this is something we would like to have as another sort of tool in our our toolkit. Um, But I'm gonna, in a moment, turn it over to Ben to kind of describe the mechanics of how the process that we would discuss and uh, propose and possibly Mm -hmm. adopt a minimum maintenance section of our bylaw. But I guess just by way of background, why it's important, so important to me um, is as I walk down my street and and most of the houses in, you know, the Lincoln Sunset North Prospect LHD, and you can literally, you can just frankly pick out the houses that are um, not owner occupied. And they're usually, or maybe I should say, because I don't know, it, it, they tend to be student rentals. I think that maybe houses that are rented to a family between the, the renters and the landlords, there may, there's more maintenance. But bottom line is, and you can't blame them, students aren't maintaining the property. So the, the, proper, the landlord, the property owner, the management company has to do, to do that. And um, some of the, you know, I think the properties that you can pick out that have are in show the most greatest signs of deferred maintenance 
and I guess it doesn't maybe even matter if they're mm -hmm. um, not owner occupied. The only reason I bring that up is it's not because it's a hardship, a financial hardship situation. It's because the property owner just is not maintaining the property. Um, but I, and I, well, there's a particular management company. I think we all know which one I'm talking about, who you can, that, that properties become in really, they, they just look like slums, for lack of a better word, really in bad disrepair. And I guess mm. when it really hit home for me is in, by way of background, it was September of 2018 and a house that was being rented to students um, on Fearing near Mass Avenue was, or I guess it's East Pleasant Street, experienced a fire early in the school year. And the students actually had to move out. I think the landlord had to put the students up in a hotel and then they began the process at some point of repairing the property. So it must have been about May of 2019, at the end of the school year, I walking by the property and I see that it has a for rent sign, but the property looks like it's falling down. It was in horrible disrepair. So I literally called the company, the, the number that was on the for rent sign. And I said, I'm surprised you're renting it out because it's not, it still has to be, repaired. And they said, oh, no, we're just finishing up, you know, repairing it where the fire was in the back. And I said, but the front of the house looks like it's falling down. I mean, there's no paint on the front of the house. There was no paint on the porch. The um, slats were missing from the banisters. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. was one of the worst derelict properties I'd ever seen. And they said, oh, no, you know, we're not, it's, it's ready to be rented. So I immediately called actually Rob Mora while I was walking <coughs> my dog down the street. And he said that, Basically, they couldn't require them to paint it or to, and those are the pictures that I sent this morning. I took them that day of what it looked like, that there was really, once it was quote, structurally considered sound, there was not even a minimal maintenance requirement in terms of how the property looked. And I was just shocked by that. So I have to say as a, you know, kind of to end this one property story, is John Thompson, who's the uh, senior code inspector for the town, worked with the property owner and they did, it doesn't look as bad as it does in the pictures I sent. They did fix this repair, the slats, and they did do like one coat of paint on the front. So it, it didn't look, you know, again, like a complete slum, but nothing requires there's no mechanism for the town to mm -hmm. um, require a property owner to make the property just look in any way decent. So that's my background. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess, Ben, how would we maybe go about this? Yep. Yeah. So um, the local historic district commission has a, you know, powers uh, give granted to it by its general bylaw, um, which is, you know, was adapted by the, you know, town meeting a number of years ago. And so um, the mechanism to amend or change the general bylaw would be through um, the commission uh, working with the town council to, um, they would need a, I believe, a, just a majority vote to pass um, a change to the general bylaw. Um, and so that would be the end goal, but, uh, leading up to that, um, you know, we would, you know, hold a series of public meetings, um, you know, this, you know, might be considered the kickoff discussion for that. And, um, we could work together to, uh, discuss, you know, if we want to pursue this and then if so, um, <clears throat> there's, we could begin by, um, you know, working with Matt mass historic to find some like template language or you know model language um there's also other uh towns and specifically you know local historic districts within towns that have uh, a minimum maintenance bylaw or something similar so we could kind of use that language as a start um and then obviously you know tweak it as we see necessary to <clears throat> have it fit the context of amherst better um, and then, you know, as always, uh, you know, the public would be welcome um, and encouraged to attend these public meetings. Um, you know, they're all posted on the town calendar and, um, you know, the public would be invited to uh, make public comment um, at the meetings as we develop the bylaws. 
the new bylaw. Um, and then, you know, we would, you know, uh, basically, you know, it would be, you know, as I'm doing now, Zoom is a great tool for this because I could, um, I or Jennifer or someone else could share their screen, literally a Word document, and we could, um, you know, live edit and, uh, you know, make, well, recomm great. make recommendations and, you know, just type, type as we go, um, which has been useful process for other similar things I've done. Um, and, uh, you know, I think once we feel like we're getting close to a, um, a bylaw, a complete bylaw, we could uh, at least maybe start, you know, priming town council for the, for this and maybe work, you know, they have three subcommittees. I'm not sure which subcommittee this would fall under, but, um, you know, get it on their agenda and then work with them, a few of the counselors, and then uh, eventually bring it to the full town council. And then they have a process for uh, adopting um, new bylaws and or changes to the bylaw. And it's, you know, they have a first reading and a second reading and then a, a vote. Um, so, you know, it's a long process, but, uh, you know, I would say it's, it's, it's not weeks, it's, it's probably months, but I don't think it's, it's, it's not years, I don't think. <laughs> oh, so I see. So if we wanted to just amend the local historic district commission bylaw or, <clears throat> or add a section to it, because I think I haven't done an exhaustive study, but Brandon had sent me some examples and the one that seemed maybe the simplest and most <laughs> applicable to us was in Edgartown where they just added a section to their bylaw. But if we were to do that, that would still have to go before the full town council. Yep. Yeah. So it's the well, it's the it's that. it's the town's the town's general bylaws that give the local historic district commission oh, okay. powers. And so, you know, because this would be a new, you know, we might want to add a penalty, we might want to add a, you know, a procedure with like, you know, applicant must be, uh, or, or like, you know, warning must be given within X number of days and we must hold a hearing with the app, with the uh, property owner after this many days. There would be a whole kind of uh, procedure laid out and it would be a, something that would likely be enforced by, you know, by uh, someone in the, build, in the building commission, by the building commissioner. Right, so right. yeah, it would so need it to puts be. another burden on town staff. It, it does. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's something that whenever there's enforcement, there's, you know, potential, we have to have a appeal process and, you know, we, we'll probably have to talk about, you know, hardship exemptions and, um, right. and then, uh, you know, uh, which court it goes to, because a lot of, <laughs> you know, that's, that's another thing to consider. So, um, so I see this is almost similar to like when we, adopted the rental permitting even though that was townwide and this wouldn't be townwide but it mm -hmm. yeah okay because it had a penalty and right yep yeah so um that yeah that would be the process um for kind of like the the standard kind of minimum maintenance bylaw that i've that we've looked at, at that other towns have adopted um you know i'm I'm wondering if there's like a, you know, like a, a way we could use if, you know, if we want to go down that path, that's, that's totally fine. I'm wondering if there's a way to, you know, leverage the existing, you know, health and building codes mm -hmm. that, that the, you know, the town can enforce at, right now. And there, you know, there's uh, certain like health code violations that are just, gen you know, relate to general upkeep of, you know, roofs and walls and um, really with a focus on maintain making sure properties are, you know, water waterproof and rodent proof and that kind of stuff. It doesn't get into the same level of detail as I think we might be interested in, but, um, you know, that, that could be a, an avenue we look into is just um, using the existing codes that you know, the state and the town do enforce and then giving the historic district commission more of a clear process to work with the building commissioner to enforce those, if that makes sense. Um, and so I guess uh, just one question. So 
it, this would, and the way it would get to the commission's um, attention would be if, if some, if a resident brought it, like I know Greta, we had discussed the same property owner, his property on Lincoln. Yeah. Um, Where there's would, railroad ties kind of, one of the, not a nail, but whatever they use them, I guess it's a nail, um, kind of stuck there so that the park cars can't park on the side, but um, yeah, it's a mess. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, is that how, so like a res, another resident brings it to the attention of the commission? Yep. Yeah. It could be another resident. It could be a commission member. Um, it, yeah, I think. Um, I mean, it could be a resident. I mean, a renter. Or yeah. A re yeah. 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 Um, it could be, you know, complaints kind of get funneled through to the building commissioner and even the planners and DPW. And then um, they are relayed to the appropriate commission or body. Okay. So, um, there's, I think, different avenues for 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 uh, complaints and you know things to be reported. Um, ben, does that happen very often now? I mean, not not very often. Um, uh, but you know, I think. Oh, well, actually, I mean, the the building inspectors do get complaints all the time for you know, you know, you know, junked cars on a outside of a house that aren't supposed to be there or um you know trash and stuff like that so uh yeah yeah they're they're busy i mean the biggest thing is just uh first you know overcrowding student residences and lots you know if there's 10 cars parked outside of a house that's suspicious <laughs> but um but things like jennifer was saying about the not painting or the broken front yeah seat. That's not, they don't do that? No. I don't, not that I'm aware of really. Um, uh, yeah, again, because, um, you know, chipping paint or, you know, missing balusters on a railing or, you know, uh, those, those kind of things aren't breaking any viol code violation that I, that I know of. Um, and so this minimum maintenance bylaw would add an extra level of stringency to the um, health and building code violations, which do exist. I, uh, Peggy. I have concerns. Yeah, I have concerns about the house on the corner of um, Mattoon and Triangle Street. As you come around the bend by the high school, mm -hmm. it's the house on the left. You know, where, like, if, if you're coming up from town, yeah, I, I know that's in the high school place. And that's also a student rental, correct? Well, I'm not, no, I think that there is, I'm not positive. I think oh. it's partially owner occupied and then there might be one or two other people coming and going. It, it, it's varied from year to year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's been, it has seemed completely abandoned. Um, but I, but the owner, I believe he's the owner is involved in the house. It, it, uh, well, by my standards, a young man, you know, not not a family, and the ballast of the the balustrades is that what they're called? And the banist the railings, the porch railings are all falling apart. I mean, it's just, he's he's done some each. He does just enough repair to keep the thing from falling completely apart. Is what it seems like, and it seems like he only might be living in one part of the house. I know we're not responsible for the rest of the house, but if it's not being used at all, if it's not being heated, then it's also inviting. You know, animal life, whatever, which you know we all deal with in, in Amherst from time to time. So, but I don't know. I don't know whether there's anything that the commission can do about that house. Uh, or, and because I don't think that's the historic district anymore. I think that. Um, yeah, I was going to say I don't. I don't not, believe oh, so. Oh, it's not. Hmm. So, are there any any mechanisms? Is there anything that we can? any influence we could have over any anything I mean to, to help um not not out, not outside of the if not outside of the historic district um uh-huh that was terrible hmm I mean you could always you know make a report right just as a citizen to the town say I think you might want to look at this property I mean I called um I, I'm such a pain I, 
I emailed John Thompson like all the time, but there was a house, they had actually come, it's a house on Fearing Street <laughs> also, but um, closer to university and, and the owner had actually come to the historical, the LHD this year for some repairs he was making, but students moved in and I, I there were literally three uh, double mattresses just thrown outside the house and some other debris and it sat there for over a week. So I called and then, so you could just do that as a citizen and John Thompson followed up with them and they had to clear it away. Yeah, I think I, I heard about that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, sit, I, I sit next to John, so. Oh. <laughs> He's great. I have to say yeah. he's great. So yeah. just as, I mean, Nadia, just as a side peg, you might want to email him. He is really great at following up. Yeah, you know, there may be a code violation. Yeah, John, J-O-N, yeah, T-H-O-M-P, is it? S-O-N? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's like Thompson J. And what's it? It's, yeah, his email is Thompson J. What it uh, yep, at, at amherstma.gov. And you know where you can also see his email address on that email that I forwarded everybody with the Fearing Street pictures. His email mm -hmm. address is also on that. And he's like the senior mm -hmm. code enforcer for the town. Karen, he's also the person that got that the. Uh, what do we call it? The Amityville Horror, that at the big white structure on Amity and Lincoln. Oh, um, uh, yeah. He got he got the owner to paint that this year. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, John Thompson is. Wow. Is great. Yep. So, because the paint was peeling okay. off that for a long time, and he got them to paint it because. Mm. Place. Right. So yeah. So I'd be yeah, curious to know what mechanism he used to inf to enforce that or to make that mandatory because it might have just been a strong suggestion it but... was just a strong suggestion yeah okay yeah because I, I think he has a relationship with that yeah. so this these properties two of them are the same owner and i think he has a relationship yeah. and so yeah there's another right and that and that's great we're lucky to have john as a resource for that now but i wonder like if um you know if we as the commission wants to have more of a an active role in um working with property owners and you know if if either john's too busy has an uh, way too much else to do or you know if and um when he retires or something and and exactly i mean we and, should have something yeah institutionalized right right I, I definitely think we should go down that road yeah. and follow the examples that you have um, forwarded to us because I think it would be to everybody's benefit in town to be able to address these eyesores. Yeah. Right. So and a more also, formalized procedure. Yeah. Is that what everyone, yeah, formalize the procedure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. like, um, like I'm looking at the Edgerton one, and it, remind me that is that Martha's Vineyard. Martha's, or? yes, Edgerton, okay. Martha's Vineyard. And here I can actually share that now. So this is the model. This is just for their historic district, um, and so I was just noting like Great. they they still don't get into the level of detail of you know talking about chipping paint it's it's really about um you know structural support and um you know i think jonathan tucker the pre former planning director added this like as something amherst cons could oh, consider no, you know what? that's me i realized oh gotcha I'm, I'm JT. you're jt as well that makes sense okay John Thompson. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well it point. sounds like this is a good start i think this would be great yeah, yeah, certainly. And I know that um, that in Amherst, they are sensitive because it was an issue when we were just, you know, forming the Lincoln Sunset, the North Prospect Lincoln Sunset Historical District that, you know, they're always like, well, we don't want to be like Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard where we have these really strict, you know, where our goal is to have everything look 
you know, very hardy toity you know, that kind of a historical district. But the reason Edgartown came up, it, it, there may be more, but it was the only example I could find where it was just part of the LHD bylaw. And mm -hmm. it wasn't, really, but, um, but again, you know, these were, we're certainly not looking and, and again, just in my sort of empirical observation, the problem properties are really never owner occupied that even if you have an owner that's on a budget, they will do everything they can to keep their property maintained. And then I know like we had an elderly woman across the street and we've been mowing her lawn, you know, neighbors will do that. But I think these are cases where the owners have the resources but it, it's really showing a lack of regard for their tenants and the neighbors, you know? Yeah. So we're talking about people that have the resource, you know, we, we're not looking to impose, you know, good knock on people's doors and saying, we think you need to, you know, paint your house, that this is in egregious cases. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I just say that because I get concerned that, you know, there'd be a perception that we're trying to become Edgar Town or Nantucket and we're not. <laughs> But this has just happened to me where they seem to have the bot that I could find, and maybe others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe uh, the Lowell Historic District has similar uh, ma minimum maintenance bylaw, but the only difference there is that it's, you know, downtown Lowell is mo all commercial or mostly commercial buildings and like old brick mill mills. Right. And so that's, it's one thing to impose this on like a, single family home, but, you know, for them, it's mostly um, larger buildings that, you know, some of them become abandoned and need, need, need upkeep, right. um, or like they're, they're literally going to like crumble into the canals and stuff. So um, mm -hmm. that that's, these are the only two I've seen, I believe that that are just a district, there are some town wide bylaws. So. Okay. So I, I, I guess I just sort of said that. Yeah. So that we're all a little sensitive if, if we get some pushback about Edgar Town, but uh, you know. And so Laurel's Laurel's a good example to kind of counter that. Yeah. And does Brookline have one as well, or is that maybe? Um, I we... don't believe so. So yeah, I mean there is the there's the demolition by neglect and the minimum maintenance bylaw, and they are very similar. I think you know demolition by neglect is is more focused on um, you know structural issues and uh, you know abandoned homes that are just historic in nature and significant, but are just uh, that it gives towns a mechanism to um, you know enforce uh, make sure that they are being kept up just uh, in a, in the most minimum of way. So. Uh, and yeah, that's, so they are very similar um, and almost interchangeable, I think. So yeah, you have to, I was like Googling and I was like looking, uh, using both terms and was able to piece a few together. Yeah. Um, I, we can discuss this kind of like a minimal maintenance because that's really what we're just talking about is the town being able to enforce some minimum level. Mm-hmm. You know, like again, that house on Fearing Street, I think it's kind of indisputable that there was no minimal level of any, you know. And with no minimal level, with leaving a house like that, a historic house will get beyond repair. So it is really in the interest of the historical district to take those old houses and not let them yeah. have yeah. to be torn down because yeah. nobody's maintained them. Yeah. Exactly. And then it does become sort of demolition by neglect. That's mm -hmm. right. Having yeah. to, that's where it's interchangeable. The house, yeah. But for what I know, the house that, that we're concerned about here, up here in our, on Triangle and uh, Mattoon was the home of the people who founded the Amherst Bulletin and the, the oh. editor of the Amherst Bulletin. It has, a, it has its own history, which is part of the town history, which oh. should be res respected. So would you say that the, other thing that, the 1800s? It, you think it dates to the 18, late 1800s? Or, yeah. Yeah, so it's really a I historic it, house. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of, I was thinking of a different house before. I'm gonna go look at that, but. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's important that that not be allowed to yeah. fall apart. And, he, and he, I must say he's done some work over the last few years. I think he has very little, um, I, think, I think he inherited the house from the previous owners who were, they were either gone when we moved in or had just about moved out, whatever, the house was in transition then. And it was before I was really aware of the neighborhood in that kind of a, a way. So I don't know, but I, I think it would be a good one for us to try to handle tactfully and um, responsibly and help if, if find ways to get him help if he needs the help to maintain it or whatever. I'm not sure. Yeah. The other thing that's uh, popped up quite literally this week, and I think it's out of our district, but I know that we've dealt with Amherst Media with the um, of the women's club. It was the yeah. row of trees that have been planted? Have you seen that? Yeah. How did that happen? That How did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was I was just aghast when I saw yeah. that yesterday. It happened like overnight. We walked this neighborhood day and night for years. The Commerce Media. Building. Oh, did they put it in? No, I got. I think in the Am. I'm not sure if it's the Gazette. No, in the Gazette. I think today. Was it in the Gazette? Yes. There's a picture and a letter from um, the Amherst Media complaining about this, talking about how many hoops they had to jump through, and that one of the things that was discussed most was that they should not destroy the vista, the street vista, Mm -hmm. the historic Mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then there was a reply, I think from town council, saying this is landscaping and there is no way anything can be done. It's a private owner and his uh, zoning is residential and uh, we only have rights, we don't have any rights over landscaping. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was horrible to see. What, an, the house, what an affront. What an affront to the community, though, to put a yeah, the wall exactly. of trees there. It's, right. It's unbelievable. I mean, it, it, seems like, it seems like it was just very spiteful because they didn't get their way uh, blocking Amherst Media and they were disappointed in us uh-huh. for allowing them to build. It seems like a very spiteful thing to mm-hmm. do. Um, maybe oh. there could be a media blitz or something, a pressure, <laughs> but I don't think there's, it sounds like you can go to the Gazette today online or anything and read exactly that yeah. article. Yeah, it was a Scott Mersbach wrote it article. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was, was quite shocking. Well, it just reminds Shock- me how I love that vista and I'm yes, sorry right. the town sold the land and it didn't become a park. But right. That was ooh. that came up in the article too. How mm. that was all kind of botched. It seems that. like the town buys lots of land all over for um, conservation, but the downtown could use some more land for for green downtown. But anyway, that's gone. So mm. yeah, I, it was like a domino. There's it. Yep. But uh, oh, yeah. Mm. So I, I mean, I'm not sure that that's really the last word but got fingers crossed yeah Mm -hmm. you know I don't know how yeah how high the hedge can I don't know I don't know but I it might not even it it looked like trees looked like small trees not a hedge I mean the hedge is yeah they were it it looked like uh like arborvitae uh, evergreen shrubs really trying to um yeah make a border wall and block out the new buildings. Which yeah. Are, but. Although the new building is not right in front of the house. <laughs> no, that's also in the article if you read it. Right, it's blocking for the view from the street. I mean, that's we went through all that to keep that vista open and move them over, and they had to. Unbelievable. Get I think we have to do a lot of um, sort of shaming uh, letters. <laughs> To the, I do think that the community, you know, again, we probably shouldn't discuss it in our meeting here, but I think the community has to do something, has right. to react. Yeah, I don't think we as a, a well, committee. Only, 
only in so far that we can re reinforce what was into uh, what Amherst Media said, how many hoops and at what expense they had to jump through those hoops. Mm -hmm. well, I thought that, the article, that they almost sounded as if it was a good thing that they had to change. You know, they yes. said they worked hard to change the building. So that I thought reflected yes. well on the committee. Yeah. But they I did. don't think we should they get involved in things that aren't our, no. we don't have any say about landscape. So as individuals, we can, but not as a committee. Right. Yeah, as individuals, right. Um, so what, well, who, 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 what would be useful? I mean, it's done. So anything that you say. Well, just I opens. wonder if, um, again, we probably shouldn't be discussing this here, but if the community, something could be done about how high they can be. I don't know. You know, well, I think they're, they're trees, aren't they? Is it? It's. I don't think they're shrubs. Well, they're, I think they're, they're low. Uh, now. Yeah. I, maybe there could be something a restriction on how high they can be. I don't know. Yeah. The, I, I, if they are arbor vitae, I used to work at a tree nursery, so I think arbor vitae. You can. Um. They, if you let them grow unchecked, they'll grow. You know, pretty tall, like you know, twenty, thirty feet. But they, they are very. Uh, you can shape them and and keep them at a certain height uh, without killing them. You know, some, some shrubs that get 20 feet, if you keep them at five feet, they'll die over time. But arborvitaes are, they're not, they're, they're a very human uh, species. They're, they're, they're meant to be for, for hedgerows that are kept at a certain level. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I can, uh, I can look closer at our bylaw and see what, what might be in there and, um, you know, bring it up with Nate and see if there's anything we can do. Um, that would be so, great. Maybe yeah. there is something, I mean, if it falls with, if anything could fall within our jurisdiction, it sounds like there's some agreement we would want to know what our tools are. Yeah, yeah, so. That would, oh, if you could. That just got to see that yeah. yesterday. I'll, I'll make a yes. note of that. Thank you, mm -hmm. that would be helpful. Do we agree we, mm -hmm. if there is something the commission mm -hmm. could do? Definitely. Wow. <laughs> and all the work that we do to keep keep things open and historic and respecting ownership of property owners, all you know, it, it was such a such a front to see see and, that, and it felt uh, so it just felt so vengeful to me. And I did when uh, Jim Les oh. wrote the letter to the article reported that. Uh, Jim Lestolt wrote a letter to Christine Bestrop. And so he did get the information. Because I was a little concerned when I read the article that Amherst Media might have thought we approved that. But he, mm. it, it was clear in Christine's response that yeah. it never came before us. Yeah. So it wasn't done by Amherst. Who, who put it in there then? The, it seems to be the homeowner of the Henry Hills house. So those are the two men. Yes. Yes. Am I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, I don't remember I, their names. I, I was just concerned. I didn't want Amherst Media to think that we had been so con concerned about protecting the vista, and then we had approved the trees. Oh, the trees. No, no. And that. So so Amherst Media does have that information based on Chris's response. Yeah. Well, I don't wow. think I saw this response, but I'll look. Yeah, she's quoted in the in the article. Oh. Then I did yeah. see it. Very disheartening thing to see with my yeah. morning coffee. <laughs> uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Picture just, yeah. Mm. But that would be great if you could find out if there's, if maybe there's something. Okay. Some mission can weigh in. Yeah. You know, for the benefit of the whole town so and anybody that visits to be able to see those two mansions. So beautiful. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's really a town wide ish, you know. At, those are like it should be a town wide right. treasures. Yeah. That's exactly right. It should be a town wide issue that the town votes on as a town. Right. And something really as propose you said, something major. Ben, if they get to be 20 feet high and we really can't see the those two houses, that's a real loss. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Oh God. I just okay. think legally there's nothing anybody can do, sounds like. Legally, they have a right to do whatever they want mm -hmm. on their. Yep. Yeah, that would be my guess. 
private property. Mm -hmm. It's in a residential district. Is there lots of hedges around here? Yeah. But it's I know right. usually on the edge of usually on the edge of a sidewalk, you know, that just blocks the view from the street, really. This is this is this has such a different intention. I mean the intention you know, is a big F U to to us, to the town. I mean I it's was so antagonizing. That's exactly <laughs> Yeah, I moved from where I used to live in California. They did have, a, you know, like a, you couldn't have your hedge be over a certain height. Oh, huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so they, I don't know that the, that's the town's gonna do that, but they said they didn't want you to be able to, you know, walk by and have people look like they were behind, you know, you could walk down the street and just see hedges that in neighborhood mm -hmm. you be able to see the houses. Oh, that's and, interesting. I know some places have fences. You can't have fences over a certain height. So mm -hmm. they do this with hedges. And uh, I think that's something we might want to, at some point, I don't know, I'm not good on this stuff, but look up how, whether that kind of bylaw for the town of Amherst might be something worth considering in the historic district. But uh, this wouldn't have protected us because they're not in the historic district. But at least they're on record need, somewhere yeah. and control. No, they are in the historic district. They are in the historic. Okay. Yeah. Well, then. Yeah, but then we, bylaw... we would have to change to include landscaping, and that's yeah, that's what we don't Oh, have. I see. Okay. Wow. Wow. That was very. It's, it's so aggressive. So aggressive, and it, it's the, the shock, the sad one. Mm. But um, yeah. So Ben, if you, you know, I don't know, again, if there's any- Well, it's, it's done. I mean, it's done. You know, there's, I don't think there's any undoing that, so. Mm -hmm. Unless there was some height. Maybe there. somebody in a nice way could talk to him, somebody who has good relationships, like who, who we were talking about, and, uh, and encourage them to keep the hedge a certain height. Um, yeah, I mean, I can understand if maybe they just wanted to have sort of a barrier so it was clear where the property line was. Right. And, and keep the hedge because it's still short. And maybe that's maybe that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they're doing. Yeah, maybe that's so maybe. Yeah. If somebody. Yeah. I bet not. I don't think that. It just, <laughs> me, no, I'm really, it was it, it's very aggressive. It's a very yeah. aggressive act. Of, yeah. As far as my response to it anyway. I can't see it any other way. Mm -hmm. So just going back, circling back to the uh, minimum maintenance bylaw, um, just trying to think of the next, laying out the steps for this process um, that you know could very well be multi-month multi process. Um, my sense, like, I feel like the best, uh, we should figure out um, kind of like what, what the scope is that we want to consider, and then um, kind of what various considerations for, um, you know, exemptions, I guess, and and then kind of what the process looks like for, you know, receiving uh, complaints or issues, and then uh, working with property owners to uh, seek you know, the outcome that we, that we're looking for. So, um, and then, you know, that can help me uh, look for model bylaws and then kind of rework them to, to fit what, what we discuss. Um, so that's kind of how I see the process playing out over multiple meetings. Um, and then we would probably have to make a presentation or before the council, when it gets the town council, when it gets to that point. Yeah, so at a certain point, like at the end of our discussions, we would hold a public hearing, kind of as we did with the uh, with the amend exclusions from the review, we would hold the public hearing that would need to be, uh, you know, have a legal ad and uh, people notified and then we would vote on like our draft, our final draft of the bylaw and then that would get sent to town council or a subcommittee of town council and and we would present there yeah okay 
Um, so were you um, wanting us now to sort of give suggestions as to some of what we'd want to see in the bylaw or wait till the next um, when we come I think back? it's, uh, you know, this is the first time we're talking about it. So uh, maybe it's something we can think about um, over the, until next meeting. Uh, or okay. we, you know, or we can talk about it now. Um, so, I, would you? I like think a lot of those Edgar Town uh, things they're they're put very nicely. I like yeah. the hardship yeah. clause. That's definitely one that we would have to think about putting in. And and uh, I liked when you said, wh whoever it was said, well, we also could work with the property owners. If they can't, uh, you know, if they are unable to do the work themselves, that we come up with some plan to assist them, because it's to the good of everybody for the yeah. whole town that that uh, thing would be preserved. So maybe we should just go with this Edgar Town thing that I read. Yep. And and every all of us really read it carefully and see if we want to take it kind of as it is and add things to that mm -hmm. or delete things seems like a pretty rational way of moving forward i agree i'd like to see the lowell one too but can i, I probably can just find it online yeah it was it was a little bit buried in there i, I can uh, i could email that out um if i still have the tab <laughs> open i think somewhere yeah um that sounds yeah. good Lauren. Yeah, Karen, I think that's a great car and a great suggestion that we could look over Edgartown and Lowell if we had it, have it. We don't have to totally reinvent the wheel and then come back to the next meeting with our, you know, own suggestions and yeah. version of that. Yeah. And then see if we can think of anything else. Like I like your railings edition. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, like I'm just looking at Lowell's now, like I think because it's more geared towards com large commercial buildings that are abandoned, um, they have, um, they, their hardship, uh, or, yeah, their hardship uh, determinations, they have a very long process with a lot uh, of- So unique... maybe that's not, maybe that wouldn't work for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, but still, you know, they have like, you know, licensed report from a licensed engineer about the structural soundness of the structure and the, you know, uh, receipts for if there's income being made on the property, um, real estate taxes for the previous two years. So that's maybe a level of detail we don't need all of that necessarily, but you know, it's worth considering how, you know, how do we uh, determine an economic hardship, I guess. And um, is there, can we just kind of discuss it or do we need like, you know, property records and income statements and this and that, or so, you know, I'd, I'd prefer to keep it simple, but um, yeah. just, just things to consider. Right. And we're a little, we are unique because I, am, I mean, we're the only town or in yeah. the state that has the state university, you know, so that's, yeah. We, yeah. So yeah. Right. Rentals get to be an issue. Yeah. And luckily, I, you know, Amherst doesn't have really any that I can think of like abandoned right. properties that are, you know, falling apart without an owner. Um, yeah. Which is good. Except so. the beautiful, it's not in the district though, but the beautiful building that belongs to Amherst College by the golf course, it's just falling down. But that's not in the historical oh, district. Right. Used to be the Deccan House, I think. So Cambridge oh. also has a historical district. So I'll check and see if they maybe have something. Okay. Um, Cambridge. Oh, that's a great idea. Okay. Yeah. Look now, because I thought, well, right. No, that's great. Thank well, you. So I wonder, is it all, this is all kind of geared and structural, uh, but there are a lot of aesthetic things too that are kind of important in a historical. Can we, have we got any way, I mean like letting mattresses rot on the outside and having paint peeling off paint, I know isn't, isn't supposed to be something mm -hmm. that we go, get into. Are, do we have any way that we can also formulate um, that this should, that it has to have a yeah, um, of? 
I'll have to look into chipping paint in that kind of detail. I know, like, for example, even in our bylaw where paint color is exempt, right? Right. I think so. Um, obviously, that's different than like paint overall and paint chipping paint. Um, but, you know, as it is now, like, you know, I think mattress is strewn about on the someone's lawn is something that can be reported to the inspector and building commissioner and is I don't know the exact bylaw but I think it's a health code violation or something um so you know maybe it's it's worth having two processes one is the uh you know us developing our minimum maintenance bylaw and then maybe we can put together a cheat sheet of all the existing health code <laughs> violations that can be uh, reported as as um, as it stands now because I, I don't know all of those are off, the, off the top of my head really, um, but you know it's health it's health and building code it's two two different things so right they're connected interrelated obviously yeah yeah so um, all of you have dogs but I'm telling you walking a dog is that's how I <laughs> like I, I just know I you everything right let's see you <laughs> walking Ricky and I'm always like oh my god I can't believe what I'm seeing <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good good thing no mm -hmm. but you know again there's the common denominator seems to be student rentals but that's <laughs> mm -hmm. you know all right so um, I was gonna oh, say that um if it's okay with you, Jennifer, there's a few members of the public at, in attendee oh, as, okay. as attendees. Um, I had on the agenda just for public comment. Um, and if they would like to raise their hands, I can allow them to talk. Um, so yeah, Hilda Greenbaum can add, add her in. So Hilda, if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I did. Um, this is not a new issue. And we've been talking about it for years and years and years. And it, well, I, we thought that we had it as not only maintenance of the house, but also, you know, grass height at three inches and things like that as part of the rent registration bylaw. So that would hit any rental property in town. But don't say it's just, you know, that owner occupied buildings are in better because they're not. I can I, I can name quite a few of them around here that are not being maintained and uh, they're not owned by not all owned by little old ladies but I lived next door on Hills Road to people who were meticulous about maintaining their house and as soon as they sold it to an owner occupant the grass was a foot tall they didn't um, you know prune any of the bushes ever where you know, this, the woman who had owned it before, you could eat off the floors and the house just, and the yard went totally downhill. So it's not, not just rental properties. It, it should be a town-wide thing. And we talked about it many, one of the things that I did when I was on zoning board, when we had one of these notorious types, and incidentally, the one you were talking about before owned a house up here in the North Amherst Historic District, and he had to put on a new roof and he painted the peeling paint recently. But um, so we talked about making this part of the rent, registration by law. I don't know what happened to it, why they didn't do it, whether they thought they couldn't get it through town meeting. If they did it, I'm not sure. But that's one place that would hit more properties than just the historic ones. And then I started to say that when I was on the zoning board, one of the first things I did when we had a slumlord who wanted to convert a house on Lincoln Avenue, um, I, I used as a motto, one of the conditions we put on all the time is that the landscaping had to be maintained, which meant oh, you had him out a lot and things like that. And so I changed it that not only did I require him for his special permit to make the house a two family house, that it, there was a list of def deferred maintenance of rotting wood that had to be replaced and fixed within six months. And that the, you know, the maintenance of the structure had to be in perpetuity. Now they don't do that anymore. They have 15 other different or 20 more different um, 
conditions they put on, but maintenance of the landscaping and maintenance maintenance of the structures on the property are, are not part of what they do. But if it is, I'm told, if it is in a condition on a permit, it can be enforced. So anybody who comes anybody who comes in for a special permit, um, you you guys can show up at the hearing and make sure that they do things like that, especially if it's historic house. So, Hilda, but I had I had approved a lot of these to, from from some lots and and knowing what they look like and listening to fifty neighbors, um, you know, my well, I'm not going to talk. The things have changed here, but but that that could be instituted again. Can I in the conditions? Huh. Um. So, okay. So. I think part of what you're saying that if it ha if it's a property that's being rented, you know, and you're right, it's certainly not all properties that are rented by any means. We tend to see the same one or two. The inside is as bad as the outside. I'll tell you. I hear through my family. They tell me. That, I mean, you hear all the stories when the tenants come in and tell you that I'm moving out of a twenty-four hundred dollar a month one into your house because it's it's better maintained and and it's. You know, I hear. But if um, so, all, if you if it's a rental property that has deferred maintenance, and they have to have a permit to be able to rent, if one of the mechanisms was to go to say that, I, I to have it be, uh, but it's not a rental permitting violation now because right, Ben, because there's not a minimal maintenance bylaw that you're violating. But, but we had we had talked a lot about putting something in there because of this situation that we all it's an embarrassment to everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the rental properties is what I'm going to say. There are a lot of people of a different generation from mine who don't have that kind of feeling about the landscaping around the house. Yeah. No, you're they right. don't care if they live in a pig pen. That's not important to them. It's important to me because I'm a nudnik, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I know it. That's it's a general, I partly a generational thing. I mean, and then, then there are people my age that just can't do it anymore. You have to find mm. people to do it, and that's not easy. But, right. but, well, but, you know, if you got two parents working and you got young kids, the, the, whether the lawn gets mowed is at the bottom of the list. Well, Hilda, are you saying that we should include a landscaping minimum maintenance in our... We talked about it. We talked about it to make people mow the lawn because, the, you know, people would not mow the lawn. But, it, I mean, you're talking about something that's just in the historic, just all historic districts or just the local historic district. That's another big issue. Well, I think we were thinking just the local historic district because, well, that's all we have jurisdiction over. So I guess that's- I think uh -huh. you ought to get together with the historic commission and come up with something together. Cause I think that, aren't, aren't they talking about it too, Ben? Uh, we're, we're, of their new we're, bylaw, they're talking about- Yeah, we're things. reworking the um, demolition delay bylaw. Um, and we had discussed maybe including the demolition by neglect as part a subsection of I that. I think you need to work together with them and and if it's a town bylaw, find out a way that it maybe applies to anything that's more than 50 years old. Mm -hmm. I yep. can't just be can't just be the local historic districts because I mean it'd be good to do that, but but there's too many problems around the town. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, you know, this precedes me, but I think uh Nate and maybe Brandon had thought starting with the local historic districts kind of as a pilot for the um, for minimum maintenance and then uh, seeing how that goes and what the process is like and then thinking about it something similar for the town wide. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, well, yeah, I just felt like the, the the historical commission and then certainly the town council just they have so many items on their to-do list you yeah but but the town council wants less and less of this that's the whole issue yeah they want to get rid of guys that regulate sound familiar 
<laughs> it's anti-business to regulate. You why gotta, I you actually think this commission, huh? This is why I don't want to just put it on their calendar because I'm afraid it won't happen. Yeah. Um, and I have I to say? give all of this. I have to give all of this some real thought. I and mean, just before we leap into another area of that we would be bringing under our purview. Um, I, I kind of like the idea that you talked about, Ben, that this is a pilot thing to see how it would go. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds good, Hilda, to work together with everybody and have a town-wide thing, but uh, it's probably much more doable and maybe more um, possibility of success to do a pilot thing with just yeah. more. Yeah, but we could go back or go to hearings of houses that are a problem and make sure that this maintenance of the structure gets put in as a condition mm -hmm. the way we do. That, that you can do, I mean, for any, but the other thing is if you work with the historic commission, then it would apply to anything that's more than 50 years old. Percent. Right, right. Yep. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand why they're doing a bylaw and you're doing a bylaw. I think you should work together. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, Jane Wald, the chair of the historical commission, was on this call at the beginning, and so were a few of the commission members. Um, so I, I had let them know that we were uh, having this conversation. Um, so, um, so yeah, I think there is some there. There's there are two different processes happening um, right now with the historical commission uh, looking at their bylaw, and then us looking at this uh, the general bylaw. Um, I was going to say, gonna actually, say yeah, Hilda mentioned something that um, it might be worth looking at is uh, I think right now for the rental registration system, it's just it's just a parking plan that they have to submit in addition with their um, permit application. And maybe, you know, I could look into whether there's more of like a maintenance commitment or, you know, uh, some sort of upkeep. Well, we do have to sign, um, and I don't do it anyway. My son does it for me, but you do have to sign that you know all the codes, right? And, and your right. town bylaws, and and part of the code, I was going to say, and then I'll give somebody else the floor. That the peeling, peeling paint. There's a the house, I think, that's six sixty five Main Street on the corner there that has been peeling paint since I was an assessor back in the eighties. <laughs> Healing pain, and and it's it's absolutely disgusting, and there be holes in the in the stairs. Real sanitary code issues. The refrigerator was held together with duct tape, as was the oven door, and it's the same. Nobody, it's owned, owned by a local who was a roofer then. I don't know who he is now, but I mean that house has never been maintained, and and the paint that's peeling off it. If there were kids under six, then you'd have jurisdiction on the lead paint. Mm. But, mm -hmm. but I mean, I've been trying to get that thing fixed, as I say, from the time when I was an assessor and the people would call me to come in because they thought it was assessed too high. And I would see the duct tape on the oven door and the refrigerator door. Mm -hmm. Anyway. A little of why we wanted to start it, I guess, our district. 30 years later, some of these issues are <laughs> remain unresolved. So. Um, it's not, no, it's been. Right, I know. Um, well, we're certainly, you know, Ben, if, if you ever, you know, wanted to have a maybe joint meeting or something with the historical commission, but um, but I agree with like what you said in Karen that as a pilot in our, you know, historic district might, we might actually be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. I, I do get concerned that Although I agree with Hilda, it should absolutely be town wide. I totally, I totally agree. But I, I think we could, thirty years from now, still be having a conversation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd like to move with at least in the LH for the for the for our commission. Right. Right. Okay. So I, I wanted to try. We're a little past five. I was hoping we could, you know, wrap up at five since we didn't have any. Um, yeah applications so ben for for the next meeting will uh you'll send us lowell and um mm -hmm. if you find cambridge and want to send it out to us 
That would okay. be great. And then we can all look at those and have some suggestions when we come back to our next meeting. Yeah. And um, so I guess that brings us to our next meeting. Do we- When is that? Do we have a date yet? No. Um, and do we have any applications that have come in? Um, no, I don't, I don't believe so. Um, uh, yeah, I, I haven't heard of any, so. So can we meet in December if it's not too close to the holidays? Sure. Okay. Yep. I can. I'll and not that we're all traveling this year so much. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go out and see my mother again. Oh, well, that's great. great. Yeah, in the beginning of December. And I can, last time I sat outside in a cafe. So I don't know if I can do that. I, I don't know. She doesn't have Wi Fi at all. Yeah. So a library, maybe? Libraries are closed. Well, oh, well we could do it when you're back, Greta. When yeah, are I get back the 17th. But um, I can also try it on my phone, and that might be fine. Okay. Well, why don't we why don't we do it after the seventeenth? Yeah. Give you a few days. Right, and... that'll be a month from now. It's already the sixteenth. Okay. Yeah, I get back the seventeenth. So. Okay. Well, Monday we'll make first. I hate to do it the week of the twenty first because that's Christmas. Yeah, I, I don't. I you, won't be. I don't, I don't won't be here that week. Have a quorum without me, and I can try to do it. Okay. Why uh, we can do it the eighteenth? What's wrong with the eighteenth? What day of the week that is? It's Friday. Uh, Friday. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's me. You just do it without, and if I can't do it, you'll still have a quorum probably. But if I can, I'll um, do it with my phone. And maybe the cafe, maybe it'll be warm enough. I'll bring yeah. a heavy coat. Yeah. I prefer not to do a Friday evening. Yeah, we can. Uh, no, but what about if we, if we want to do it, keep to Monday, that would be the 14th. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Okay. And then I'll see what I can work out. Last time it was fine. Okay. Thank you. Although, is it cold there to be outside? It doesn't get terribly cold, but I'll have to talk fast. Maybe I mean, just talk. Can, can you do it on your phone? Just from I'm gonna try it. Yeah, you can. Phone. You can call in. Um, you won't see the screen, but um, I, I email everything out anyway. So okay. The um, last time I used the I used my phone, but the no, I didn't. I used my I bought my iPad. Anyway, right. I'll figure something out. I can make a hotspot. Rita, Rita, you can you can rent one of those or take one of those hotspots with you from the library that they just advertised. That's a good idea. And my phone has a hotspot too. Right. Right. But but they said you know they come and get our hotspots. Oh, I'll do that. That's a great yeah. idea. <laughs> anyway, I can figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so then we'll confirm for Monday, December fourteenth at four p.m. Right. Yep. All right. Got it. Sounds right. good. A motion to close the meeting. Uh. Yep. I yeah. Would, to, adjourn. yeah. to adjourn. Yeah. And you don't have any other. So I see we'll... the question and answers lit up, but you don't have. Yep. Yeah. That was just one of the attendees, Hetty, start up asking how, just how Zoomed work <laughs> worked. <laughs> um, but if there is any other public comment, um, you can raise your hand. To unmute. But uh, I think we're all set. So. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Hilda, for your comments. Anytime. <laughs> so, is there a motion to adjourn? I I motion to adjourn. Yeah. Okay. Um, second. Thank you. I second. All thank right. you, Lauren. Okay. All in favor, obviously. So, Bye. We'll <laughs> Bye. Okay. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you all. Happy. It was a good conversation, and we'll see you next month. Mm -hmm. Take, care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.